Welcome to a very special edition of the Ellen MacArthur Foundation Circular Economy Show. Tonight we're here at the CNMI Sustainable Fashion Awards in Milan and outside the lovely iconic venue of Teatro alla Scala. And the reason we're here is because we're partnering for the very first time with Camera della Moda to bring circular design right to the heart of the Italian fashion industry. the world, momentum continues to grow as more and more creatives harness the power of circular design for fashion. Becoming part of the solution to global challenges such as climate change and biodiversity loss, rather than one of the biggest contributors, is no mean feat. But it is happening everywhere and it's happening now. We are absolutely thrilled to be celebrating the ambitious innovation and enormous impact created by four fearless innovators whose efforts to redefine the future of fashion have seen them receive nominations and awards for one of the industry's most prestigious events. Welcome to this very special edition of the Circular Economy Show from the Sustainable Fashion Awards in Milan. Nominated for the ultimate accolades at the Camera della Moda Sustainable Fashion Awards 2022, Circular design pioneers Eileen Fisher, Enquo, Timberland and Vestiaire Collective are taking circular design directly to the heart of the fashion industry and we're going with them. Join us as we span three continents to follow our pioneers' individual journeys from their design studios in the US, Nigeria, Switzerland and France to the red carpeted catwalks of Milan. Founder and lead designer Eileen Fisher started her brand in the 80s. A true pioneer of circular fashion, Eileen has been testing different circular models for the past 20 years and debuted her own take-back model, Green Eileen, in 2009. So what are the big challenges? What has the company learned during the course of its journey? And what does circular design mean for Eileen Fisher? The fashion industry, the way it's working right now, is not sustainable. It requires massive change in the system. The, there's way too much waste in the system. Um, we're using way too many resources. Um, it just isn't sustainable the way it is. So we need a new, we need a new plan. My brand is about simple, timeless, comfortable clothes, sustainable clothes. Um, it's actually kind of a system, clothes that sort of work together, a sort of uniform or system you find your pieces in. Um, and you build a wardrobe, a simple wardrobe. I would love to leave behind a, a model for a more holistic, circular, and regenerative kind of a clothing company. Uh, and actually, 
one that um, um, gives more than it takes, you know, uh, one that has a positive impact on the planet and on the people. I always think about circular design as as starting at the beginning, you know, and, and, and then thinking about the whole cycle of life of products and and then the the sort of afterlife of products and how they come back to life. Our Renew program is our take back program. We started Renew in 2009 with the idea of really being fully responsible for the clothing that we're putting out in the world. It's not just about how we're making the garments, but where are those garments gonna end up once the customers no longer want them. So, so far we're almost at 2 million garments that we're collected. So that really kind of is like the step closer to us closing the loop. Because we not only resell the garments that they're in perfect condition, we actually transform the ones that they cannot be resold, the ones that they're damaged, they have a busted zipper, like a, a huge stain, like a moth feast, right? Uh, we actually use those garments to make new pieces. So we have our Waste No More program, which is a felting program, where we literally deconstruct the garments and we run them through a felting machine and we make beautiful textiles. They're unique. They're made entirely from old Eileen Fisher garments. And we made accessories, we made art pieces, we made wall works, we put them into buildings as, you know, like beautiful installations. Um, and then we even do home goods with them. So these are unique pieces. We also have our mended collection, which we visibly mend garments. So these become like unique pieces that the customer is gonna wanna hold longer into their closet because they're one of a kind. So Eileen Fisher made a commitment to increase its reliance on regenerative agriculture um, several years ago. And we've been working with farmers in our wool supply chain to, uh, to help them shift from conventional farming practices to regenerative farming practices. Traceability and transparency are critical to uh, responsible sourcing. We can't make any improvement until we know where our product is coming from, where the fibers are coming from, where the materials are processed. So at Eileen Fisher, we make every effort to understand where all of our fibers are, are grown, where they're processed, where they're finished, and we get to know those, um, those suppliers so that we can help make improvements. We can't make improvements if we don't know where things are coming from. On the flip side, we also think it's important to share uh, as much information with our customers and with the public as possible, and that's where transparency comes into play. Some of the challenges um, that we come across are that some things are really hard to recycle. Um, zippers and elastic waistbands and, you know, buttons, a lot of things are, are hard, or fabrics that are um, blends, so that if you have lycra in a fabric, um, synthetics are tricky, uh, you know, well, in our system, they're tricky. Thinking about how can we design things without Lycra, how, or can we find a biodegradable uh, uh, elastic kind of fabric, because everybody loves the stretch in a lot of clothes. But. What I see when I do this is that I am one medium-sized company, and it's just, you know, we're not getting there fast enough. There's too much to do. There's too much waste. There's too much work to do. And so we can't do it alone. So we really need the whole industry to work together. I just really think it's possible, actually, to make clothes that actually make the world better. Eileen Fisher is a company set up with the intention to disrupt the fashion industry from the outset, with many of the principles of circular design embedded from the start. But, as Eileen herself said, they are only one medium-sized company. So how might one of the world's largest and most popular fashion brands evolve to embrace the principles of circular design? One of the nominees, Timberland, has been on that journey. So for almost 50 years now, Timberland has been in the business of making products from natural materials that really stand the test of time in terms of you know durability and and a very timeless aesthetic. So we feel like, you know, we're, we're a really great fit in terms of making that leap into the circular economy uh, because, you know, we've always been about making products that are built to last. And moving forward, making new products from 
old products is, is a natural succession to what we've always been about really as a brand. From a footwear point of view, the challenge is a little bit more um, a little bit more difficult in terms of, you know, how do we recycle products which are made from multiple materials, but our Timberloop Trekker, and there's a there's a model here, is really built around disassembly. So there's a simple procedure of pulling the cord around the outsole, and then the Timberloop Trekker will be, you know, sort of, it comes apart into all of the different material components, which, as you can see there, those four different materials can go into their respective recycling stream. So I think first of all, it's about being clear on your vision. And our vision is for a greener, more equitable future. Um, and then I think it's really about bringing the organization along with you on, on that journey. Um, along the way, we, we know that we will, we will test things, we will try new ideas, and that some of those are, are gonna fail. Um, but the most important thing is, is that we look at those failures and we learn from them to build more successes. And I think you know sharing what we learn as we go with the wider industry is something that we're, we're very keen to do so that everybody can work together towards a circular economy. So one of the biggest changes that the industry needs to make is to really slow fashion down. Designing for circularity has posed new problems for the design team, but ultimately it's really making us double down on, on craft. Um, we've always, as a brand, crafted products for durability and, and with a timeless aesthetic, but what we're now also thinking about is how do we build products that can have that second life? How do we craft products that can be taken apart when they come back to us and turned into new products? Broadly speaking, I think consumers are really interested in any product which has a low carbon footprint. They want to, to buy products and, and consume products which which help reduce the impact on the environment. So if that is regenerative or, you know, products made from, from recycled materials, they're actively seeking out those products now. We hear that. The challenge which still remains is to change the supply chain. So it's, it's you know, remodeling the supply chain from that very linear model that's obviously built around huge volume and speed um, to that circular model where we can actually take products back into the supply chain, deconstruct them, make those products into new materials and then feed those back into the supply chain. That's where most of the work still needs to be done, to be honest. So I think it's important that we inspire the next generation of designers to really think holistically about the products that they make, and to think about products that have longevity not just in the sense of you know sort of built to last and, and you know made with with durable materials but also built to have value in the future so that they can be resold to, to new consumers eventually the goal is to become fully circular eventually um, i think alongside that we're, we're expanding our use of regenerative materials and the hope is that one day we can have a net positive effect on nature Timberland's ambition is to have a positive impact on nature through durable design and the use of regenerative inputs. Another of our award nominees has a very different approach to the problem. Fashion Unicorn Vestiaire Collective began a circular business model for fashion in 2009 and now enjoys a community of 23 million people across 90 different countries. Generating revenue without making new clothes, Vestiaire Collective circulates high-end luxury goods on one of the world's biggest online selling platforms and is currently valued at $1.7 billion. The C Collective is a leading global platform for desirable pre-loved fashion. We founded in Paris the platform in 2009 with my co-founder Fanny Moison. Today, we are a global community of 23 million members since we are present in Europe, Asia, and in the US. We launched Vestia with the idea to promote the circular fashion movement as a solution to fight overconsumption, overproduction, and the wasteful practices of the fashion industry. Our vision and mission is clear. We want to transform the fashion industry for a more sustainable future by empowering our community to drive change. We are super happy to be nominated to the Circularity Award 
and we are very honored because Circularity is part of our DNA at Vestia Collective. Recycle prevents uh, the overconsumption and also the overproduction, but it's only true when we get to slow the pace and change the way people consume fashion. Our model uh, helps to avoid carbon emission. Buying on Vestiaire Collective, for instance, saving 90% of an environmental cost of a new item. But this is only true if we get to reduce the way we consume. And that is why we think at Vestiaire that buy less and buy better is the way we should consume. We need more circularity. And if we want to meet 1.5 degree target by 2030, we need one out of five garments to come from circularity. So, Buy less, buy better, wear more, care more, and sell more. We start Vestiaire, uh, first for our friends, then for a community, a larger community, you know, because we notice that people uh, keep buying, but they don't wear, they don't use. So it's, it is waste, you know. In, and, and the platform um, was able to offer them one solution to expand the life cycle of the items. What was important for Vestia is to, to build that community, but also that unique uh, catalog with our curation um, to select, I would say, you know, the, the uh, items that keep their value over the time. Uh, that's why we don't sell everything. That's why also we fight against fast fashion and we encourage people to buy better, uh, to, to keep and to wear, of course. And if you don't wear anymore, just sell it. When you buy pre-love fashion, you, you're like an activist. You do something good for the planet, um, for the next generation, for, for tomorrow, for today, but also for tomorrow. Actually, it's not an achievement, it's more a beginning of a journey. We were super happy because uh, B Corp is like this big framework with those five areas where you take a look at your company and you have a good mapping of what you can do better and where you are already uh, pretty strong. Um, yeah, we were uh, really proud actually because uh, we were the first uh, global platform to have it. I want to leave the next generation with a transformed fashion industry with a feeling of pride to have served as an opinion leader for a better future. This isn't just happening in Europe and North America. Our final nominee, Enkwo, is based in Nigeria, where she has built equity behind her brand, designing old denim creatively back into new, valuable clothes. really, really happy to have received this award. Um, it, it means a lot to me because what, what it shows is that African voices are finally being heard. We've been, a lot of us have been working in this industry for such a long time, but we're only known at home. And so now I think um, it, it's just amazing that we are able to tell our stories outside of where we come from. And tell it by telling our stories, other people can learn from us, we can learn from them. Much as the world is going global, we also have to think about what we have. And we have to learn to value what we have because we have everything here in abundance. My brand, Unquo, is an artisanal brand at the forefront of the sustainable fashion movement in Nigeria. Um, it, the core values are environmental conservation, textile waste reduction, and craft skills preservation. So the reason why I work with, I choose to recycle denim is because um, I think back in 2016, um, I was getting ready for Lagos Fashion Week and I couldn't get access to the kind of fabrics that I wanted. But what I did have was a huge, was lots and lots of sacks full of um, denim offcuts because I use denim a lot. Um, and so I just started 
something came to mind, like, what can I do with this thing to turn it into something that we can use? And because a lot of the strips are really small, um, it was difficult to patchwork it, but what I was able to do was strip and sew these little bits back together and turn it into a whole new fabric. One of the challenges I have with sourcing denim is that I use a lot of dead stock and I use um, secondhand clothes. Sometimes I have no idea where it comes from, so at times we buy it, um, the colours run or we bring it home and find out that it's actually not made of cotton. Um, and then another thing that's happening in Nigeria now is most of the secondhand jeans coming in here are stretch jeans and we, we don't use any jeans that have elastic in them. And so it's actually, it is becoming a bit of a problem finding, um, finding good quality denim in the markets. Um, so what we've done is that we have a system where we're asking people to not only bring back their jeans to be remade, but just donate their old jeans, um, anything they, they don't want, uh, as long as it's not stretched denim, to donate it to us so we can use it. For me, I was just doing what I like to do. Um, I, I honestly didn't know that it could become such a, a big business, and I, I just didn't know it would turn into such a well-known brand. The challenge to create a circular economy for fashion must continue if we are to transform the industry into one that becomes part of the solution to global challenges rather than part of the problem. The innovation and creative explorations to redesign fashion fit for the future are being celebrated with events such as the Sustainable Fashion Awards and just as importantly shared with everyone right across the industry and beyond. Circular design for fashion is vital in shifting the industry to one that eliminates waste, circulates products and materials and regenerates nature. And this is now being recognised by designers and decision makers across the globe. For some, the journey has just begun, but it's gaining huge momentum and fast. And this is a journey most definitely to be continued. Thank you for joining us in Milan for the special edition of the Circular Economy Show. It's been a really exciting and rewarding evening. It has, and a massive congratulations to all the winners. It's been great to see you up on stage receiving your very well-deserved awards. And we've still got a huge amount to show you from this evening from behind the scenes, so please do follow us on all of our social media channels. And make sure you tune in next time for the next edition of the Circle Economy Show. Ooh.